Hey there, a huge thank you to all the names on screen right now. The renegades who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Hugely appreciate it, my friends. Enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome back to Let's Suffer Together. I'm Suffer back, and we will be back in the mines, but firstly, if you were aware of the Triple I Initiative, a sh digital showcase where many, many, many indie devs came together with a really smart idea of a way of presenting their new announcements and trailers in a format that's very pleasing to an audience. Now, if you're aware of Triple A games, um, the way they showcase their trailers and games, it's a lot of waffle, you know? There's a lot of, oh, you know, we must pray us down, and then five, ten minutes of just useless speech. What happened here is 45 minutes of trailer after trailer after trailer, and it was one, it was beautiful. You can always trust indie devs to come up with good ideas and to execute. So this digital showcase, the Triple I Initiative, happened yesterday on the 11th of the April 2024, and we were co-streaming it live officially, and it was just fantastic. But there was one reason why I knew this digital showcase was going down, and because I'm a part of the Undermine Discord, we have a rich and storied history with the game Undermine, a great roguelike game that from the very first few days of early access started playing it and watching that game grow and being a part of that was such a privilege working with again the team the thorium team was absolutely wonderful and fantastic and they said hey watch this um so you know being a streamer i decided to co-stream the whole event since the whole idea of triple i games really appeals to me and having that being more pronounced in the video game world as a thing you know, since AAA games often disappoint, why not have something meaningful in Triple I? And actually having that as a phrase and bringing some honor back to gaming. But during the showcase, we were given the best news that I have ever heard in the history of anything. And that is that Undermine 2 is in existence at the moment, still being worked on to be announced. But we got the trailer. I'm going to showcase a bit of that trailer. I'll put the link down for the full trailer down in the description so you can hear it. You can watch it without me waffling over it. I'm going to show you some details about it. But bigger, better, and bolder than the original. So, they came out with an announcement, Undermine 2, after the trailer in their Discord, explaining why they stopped working on Undermine 1. They, to put it short, they boxed themselves in that they couldn't add things to the game that they wanted to. So starting a fresh project and moving forward with that, with all their fresh ideas, was the rational and smart thing to do. But if you've seen the trailer, there's a lot to be, uh, you know, happy about. But we'll go through the trailer after telling you about the features of this game. So back when we played, again, we played from the start of Early Access, watching it and playing it all the way through to its last DLC. And again... Again, we have such a history with this game as a content creator. We have an achievement in the original game named after our channel, Let's Suffer Together. There's a song in the game called Let's Suffer Together. Again, we played this game religiously, and it was a, such a pleasure to do so. It's such a charming, lovely, and wonderful game. Great community as well. And there's just so many things to like about the game. I mean, it's got even weird things in, like, for a roguelike game, top-down roguelike game, you can jump in it and use that jumping to great effect to dodge stuff. But in the second one, what we didn't have in the first one was two-player local co-op. Being able to play with a friend. Again, I met Priskip, one of our greatest channel friends, through Undermine. And we both ended up play playing a lot on Nighter together as well. But we were never obviously able to play Undermine together. We were able to enjoy each other's you know, runs and content separately and enjoy being a part of the community together, but we could never interact in-game together. But now, with a two-player local co-op, which you'll see a little bit of in the trailer, I think. A little bit of it is in the trailer. But playable character classes as well. Branching paths was a part of the first one as well. But again, hopefully they... I think in the first one, there's a lot of ideas that were great ideas, but because of the limitations of what they had already built, like they said, they did box themselves in a corner. And I think that's an honesty and openness with their community that I really respect because they did, you know? 
while being a super enjoyable game, you could see why in real time as they were building, why they were kind of, they wouldn't be able to add certain things or kind of build on it without just starting fresh on a fresh canvas with all the assets they've still got, right? So this one is going to have full mod support as well. The one thing we didn't have, well, not the one thing, but a major thing we didn't have with the original mod support. And again, the Undermine community was super creative in what we could do in terms of the artwork that was produced. Again, all of the ways we could, you know, manipulate the mechanics, classic roguelike community. But again, the um, interactive relics called Arcania. And of course, the relics in the first game is how you were able to, in one way, buff your character. Interactive relics this time. And again, you might get a, a bit of a awareness about what that is in the trailer but the whole branching paths thing as well if they integrate that into the game from the start i think it'll be a lot better this time around so i'm super excited for this game i get to be announced make sure you get the wish list Thirty thousand people have already wish listed undermine 2 and it gives a credit to the devs about the love for in the roguelike community that people have for this game it people have such a soft buff for undermine the pilfers the peasants black rabbit and of course when i was watching the triple i initiative and you know we had sled aspire 2 as well which is great announcement uh, amongst definitely watch that triple i initiative again definitely type that into youtube after this video or after you've watched the trailer in the description all to yourself in real time but it was like 15 minutes into the triple i initiatives 45 minute stream and then i saw this image this is a classic image from the first game peasant i'm gonna actually turn the volume down even more just so i can be not, not all the way but it's got classic undermine music as well yeah, i don't want to blast everyone's ears off again my volume's quite sensitive there you go that's perfect and a classic feel falling down peasant i think that is from the original game actually but yeah you can see already the the art <laughs> black rabbit rushing in you can just see from the kind of when the peasant looks around then they kind of more attention to detail in the actual player character straight away and you'll continue to see that the definite as it zooms out you'll see the definition in the world as well high five black rabbit crate as we call the crazy eyes here on at lst she looks at you funny man oh oh i've got to go back that look at that I mentioned jumping before in the game. There was a hook here. Yeah. The, a hook. Black Rabbit is off the ground here. So not only can you jump in the game still, which we do see in the trailer, but it's now being incorporated into assist other mechanics in the game to get that height to dodge over projectiles again it was one of those really weird but wonderful things that worked in undermine that made the game special for me because it showed thorium were willing to take risks because again i i don't really apart from platformers any top-down roguelike game you had dodge rolling in gungeon but that really wasn't the same um it it kind of was jumping but not in the sense of this, where you could kind of get real high, you know? But again, the fact that the little uh, hook bolt hook here gives you height, that's awesome. Because it means any danger on the floor, you, you will just have legitimate reason to avoid. You know, in games where, say you use a piece of equipment, and it doesn't give you any height, say there's danger on the floor, and you use a hook, and it drags you across the floor, you somehow avoid the damage. And you're like, I'm still on the ground. How have, I, how have I avoided it with this tool? And it just lets you get away with it. At least this is detail where it shows you why you've gotten away with it in terms of using the relevant mechanics in the game to show you rather than just to give it to you, you know? But again, the detail in not only the enemies, the arenas, the fact that, you know, this is a, like, co-op game as well, a single player. Oh, yeah, we gotta go back there. We've gotta go back there. This this peasant is giant, by the way, because of a single little reason. Ah, oh, no, it's changing. There you go. Right, right, right. We have the classic pilfers back as well. Pilfers were little green dudes who came and steal your gold that you found in the mines. They also operated the shops. But if you check, 
<laughs> Collar serum. Now, this will temporarily temporarily embiggen nearby allies. <laughs> Which will probably embiggen your peasant as well. Uh, but all of the relics, all of the items in the game always had a tag with them. Basically giving you a little bit more detail about what it was or just a nice little joke. It gave such flavour to the game. But this one for the one that turns the peasant bigger. Formulated to solve a peasant's shortcomings, both in the gold mine and recreational settings. And I was in the Discord uh, before, and apparently the dev... Uh, <laughs> I can't remember I can't remember whether it was... I think it was 82. I, can't, I don't think it was Quasimodem, but I could be wrong. Um, there was, one of them was saying, ah, oh, they really, you know, the other one. The other dev really toned down my dick joke, confirming it was about sex. Um, <laughs> in a recreational setting, yeah. So, embiggen the peasant for the recreational sex. Yes, of course. But I'm liking the kind of art style. The art style in Undermine was just fabulous, and it what drew, drew a lot of people to the game, as well as its cuteness. It's really great to see they've kind of just polished. They haven't really gone for any change. They've polished it. This is like... A do-over game, shall we say, where the first one was a great experiment that people got a lot out of, but this one is where they can really work on the things that they got wrong, you know? Work on the things that they know they can do better, along with all of the previous experience from the devs themselves, the community that can come in and, you know, have their say as well. But the pilfers, man. Yeah, huge. I wonder if, uh, you know, that's uh, kind of isaac and it? Changing size. But this as well, right? This was a classic thing you could do during the original game where the bombs that you would use as a peasant, you could whack them with your pickaxe. Uh, they'd go flying. But, you know, the back and forth between Black Rabbit and the peasant. Hey, I always dreamed of some, you know, bomb tennis in Undermine, but we never had anybody who hit the bomb backwards. Have you noticed as well, Black Rabbit isn't using a pickaxe. She is using nice little knives. Very Black Rabbit. Now, Black Rabbit is the core capitalist of the game. She offered in the first one very dodgy deals. She's the dodgy dealer. She's the scam artist. She's the fundamental capitalist. She, you know, did the trades, <laughs> trying to buy your relics. But again, she's a great character in the game. Um, again, her actual image as Avatar in the game as well, her eyes were... Uh, they stared directly into your soul, hence why we call her crazy eyes. Um, but she's... Yeah, she's cool. <laughs> but again, just an all-round polish as well. And I would actually be okay if they just released Undermine again. You know what I mean? Like, this is kind of perfect. They've got a lot of the same enemies, as you can see. A lot of skeletons. Cell! What are the, like, the boss fights from the first game as well? But now with co-op, now with a lot more polish, a lot more experience, and that is hopefully going to bring an amazing game to all of us. And, oh, I'm so excited for not only... Any future news on this, like when it's coming out, any ad other features, but just to get it in, get it in my hands and play it, because again, I've got such love for Undermine. The, you know, any news on anything Undermine related was always, you know, to be cherished because we knew about a project the Thorium devs were working on, Project Lithium. Lithium is Undermine too. They obviously didn't want any sort of distraction. They didn't want to say we're making Undermine 2 um, for whatever kind of reasons they had. And there are le legitimate reasons why you, you wouldn't want a community to know you're making a second game. Um, just so you can kind of hunker down and get to business instead of having to answer everyone's questions. Or, you know, if you say you're making a second game, you'll get like half the people saying they want this, the other half saying they want something contradictory. Just make your own art. You know, video games are art. I truly believe that. And sometimes you can get a lot from a community in terms of help, advice, and whatnot. But a lot of the time, also, you just, you have the artistic vision, you know? You need to go create that. And I really respect 
you know, not only Quasimodo, well, Clint, Derek, and Cortland, the team that are making up Thorium. Again, Quasimodo, 82, and Cortland, as we know them. But again, I'm excited to finally show what I've been cooking and hope you're excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Again, it looks like it's keeping so close to the original. And I'm really happy for that. Again, I wouldn't be bothered if they basically released Undermine again, you know, with extra content, like DLC. But they couldn't do that because they boxed themselves in. But we're getting, hopefully, that and more. Like, we're getting the original back plus. You know, it's Undermine plus, basically. But again, I would beseech you to follow Undermine 2, 2's development on their, on their Discord specifically, because that's where the devs really interact with the community. They interact on Twitter as well. You've got the website, YouTube for any trailers or anything else that pops out. I'll be covering it. Don't worry. But make sure, again, you support the Undermine 2 devs. They deserve it. They work hard on their art. And they deserve not only recognition, but also admiration for how they, again, have put out a wonderful piece of art in the first place in Undermine, but now have, again, taken time, gone away, and worked their ass off. Because, again, even from the trailer, you can kind of see the little subtle changes and ideas that have come forward. Like this, a returning character in Beltraim. I can never pronounce that. Beltraim. You know, let's make it simple. But, and again, Beltraim, when you first see him, is in like a din... He's actually just wandering a field, I think. Um, and you find him, you take him back to your hub area, and he's got this basic alchemy set. But as it says here, we haven't seen a new guy in... Because you play a different peasant every run. You know, your peasants are expendable. You just get a new peasant. So every character you play is a different peasant. And it's a different peasant. It's a different peasant. So that's how the characters talk to you. Um, but he's commenting. I haven't seen one of you in many months. Basically saying to the... Like a fourth wall break. Uh, it's been a while, right? We've been away making a new game. Good to see you back. But also, Beltrain being a royal alchemist during those months he's got a better kind of you know alchemy station time has passed things have moved on things have got more advanced and again it's lovely to see that they've kind of incorporated that kind of passage of time and it's like we're coming back into the same minds but it's been we've been away a while you know and it'll be like returning to a friendly home it really will. That's what I truly believe. And we get to play with friends now. And again, now I'm... When it comes to online co-op, I am very critical. My main experience of online co-op in roguelikes is enter the gungeon. Now, I don't know many... I don't have much other experience. So as a layperson... Ah, you know, layperson in roguelike games, really. Um, <laughs> considering the professional nature in which we conduct ourselves in roguelike games. Um... In Enter the Gungeon, you shared a screen. So one, your character was limited by a second character person, right? Playing on screen. So you could not go out the bounds of the other person. Not the room, the other person. You both had to stay within a box. And you, if a person tried to escape that box, they were limited. Not by a wall in-game, but by the other person you know, being at the other side of that box. I dislike that. It's limiting. It's why I prefer solo play and why I like ro roguelike games. And I stayed away from Enter the Gungeon. Co-op. It, it felt like a diminished version of gameplay to be limited like that. I would prefer that we kind of had freedom within a room and we, like, your friend could go off your screen and do something down below that you couldn't see. And then, you know, you had your own screen. They had their own screen. However, I'm not an expert in coding and anything like that. And I don't know how that could work. You know what I mean? So that's how I'd like it. I don't know if it's possible. But I think that needs to be considered. What is the best outcome? How does it feel? We don't know because only the devs will probably know. How it feels in-game. Maybe it feels different from Gungeon's version. But it's something to think about. It's something that I'd only have uh, criticism if it felt bad in-game, and I don't know until I play it. But again, it always plays on my mind when I hear about a co-op in a roguelike. That I hope there's some attention to detail paid on how limiting it feels when that happens. 
to a person who wants to use the entire room, the entire map at all times and not be restricted by someone who you ca you we're, we're part of a discord kind of comms now these days in gaming right we all, we've always got some sort of comms open with our friends or have the potential to however even with audio communication discussion between two people in that way you know it feels like it's unnecessary I shouldn't have to. I'm going. I shouldn't have to say for a Discord call. I'm going up top left. Come with me. I'm going bottom right. Come with me. So you know, and that's what you'd need to do basically. Otherwise, you'd just have to play with someone who has an instinctive feel for how you play and able to give you the freedom. Hey, I'll be playing a hell of a lot of co-op of Undermine Two or Priskip, no matter how I feel. Again, mainly because I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to share that experience of kicking ass in roguelike games. And I know Priskip, again, around my skill level in the original, which we, we dominated. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't be stopped in the new game plus kind of scenario of the summoning stone system. Although people ended up, you know, I ended up playing more Noita than I did Undermine when Noita became more prominent. And then, you know, other people took that kind of to new heights in the summoning stone difficulty system they had um ah what a fantastic piece of news though get down in the comment section how do you feel hey what would you like to see in undermine 2 again anything and everything you know that you want to say about undermine 2 get down in the comment section let us know hey if you like the content of roguelike gaming indie games in general make sure you click that like button Follow, subscribe, I should say. Subscribe to the channel for more content. You can also help support what we do here by clicking the join button down below for contributions to the channel that help keep us running. Again, you can do so also through the coffee.com forward slash LST suffer link in the bottom left hand corner. It'll be in the it'll be in the description as well for one off contributions. Help me buy a coffee. <laughs> as they say. Well, help me buy a new controller, you know? Uh, we go through a lot of controllers here at LST, one-off contributions and even recurring contributions on a monthly basis. Again, really help support what we do in a manifest way. And thank you so much for everyone who considers to do so. It's huge. It really is. Thank you for considering to do that when you don't have to, you know? So it really means the world to me. So thank you for that, guys. Anyway... Don't forget the Triple I Initiative. Make sure you go subscribe over there as well for more collaborative and collective indie game news. Stuff. <laughs> not, I was going to say reviews, but they're not reviewing anything. Announcements, trailers, all of the... You don't have to watch the entire thing. You can go on the Triple I Initiatives YouTube and see every trailer individually. Now, what makes me really happy here? I mean, I don't like to compare it to other games, but, you know, Undermine down here. Eh, it's not 6.6, .6, you know, compared to everyone else around it. Not doing so bad. Not, I mean, 10k up on Darkest Dungeon, sure. But everyone else on 3k, Undermine on 6. Beautiful stuff, man. Vampire survivors, obviously, you know. Oh, Dino Lords look good. Dino Lords. <laughs> the Northmen are coming on dinosaurs. I get so much good stuff in that uh, Triple I initiative. Make sure you go check it out. But yeah, Undermine 2. Anyway, anyway, I'm gone. See you later, guys. You take it easy. Um, oh, twitch.tv forward slash Let's Suffer Together as well. Join us on stream because we'll be... You know, when this drops, we'll be playing Undermine 2 over on the live stream. Currently, again, whether it's Noita, Lethal Company, Helldivers 2, that's our, you know, triangle of excellent gaming we're on at the moment. And, uh, yeah, join us on stream. Say hello. I'll catch up with you soon in the next video. Ah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pooped. I, again, the last few days have been... Like draining, man. We had the triple I. Just 45 minutes of awesome video game kind of trailers. I haven't taken a day off streaming in ages. Oh, man, it's just been epic, you know? A great, great week for indie gaming.
I'm going to take a nap though now. <laughs> you know, after all this, I'm going to have a little lie down. <laughs> it's been too much. Uh, I've run out of caffeine as well. So it's time for me to go. But until next time, my friends, uh, stay sexy out there. Keep on enjoying indie games. Catch you soon. Much love. Peace. Uh, but a huge thank you also to the Pounders, the other selection of people who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Again, huge appreciation to you guys. As I said before, thank you so much. I'll catch up with you soon. Peace.